Hi everybody, we're back. And today we're going to learn about motion on an inclined plane. So, let's draw an inclined plane here, like that. And all inclined planes have an angle at which they are inclined at. So it's basically like having a ramp or a, a slide something where some object could slide up or down well if it's sliding up it's gonna have to have an initial velocity but usually it might be sliding down so we have like this object here and what we need to figure out is what are the forces on this object due to gravity because usually when we have an object sliding in the past, we've had it on a horizontal surface. And when it's on a horizontal surface like this, what we say is, what's touching it plus gravity? Well, the ground is touching it and it's pushing it up with a normal force and gravity is pulling it down with mg and we say, hey, these two forces are equal and opposite, so we recognize that the normal force must equal mg, and so therefore they cancel each other out. But now, if we want to calculate the friction, we've said before that, let me move this over so you can see things a little bit better, there we go. You've said, we've said that the friction is equal to mu fn, but since in this case, since fn is mg, we say it's mu mg. So that's what we've done before. But now see things are a little bit different because since we're on the slope on this plane, we have to figure out what are the forces in the axes of this plane. Now what I mean by the axes of this plane is usually our, our x and y axes looks like this. This is y and this is x. Well, now I'm going to change these axes to be in line with the plane. So they're going to be like this. Now this is going to be the y direction and this is going to be the x direction. Notice that the x direction I'm going to say is like positive down the slope and the y direction is perpendicular to the slope. Okay? Now if I draw the vector force of gravity on this object, let's let's draw it right there. Okay? And it's going to be well, actually that isn't very straight, is it? Let's try that again. Straight down, just like that. Now that's going to be mg because we all know gravity pulls straight down. Now what I want to be able to figure out is what are the components of mg in these x and y directions? Now in order to do that I'm going to change colors and I'm going to say okay that mg is actually made up of a force perpendicular to the slope like that and another force that is parallel to the slope like that. Now, what are those two red components? Well, if only we had an angle in this. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to take a kind of a moment away from this free body diagram and we're going to look at some geometry. So I'm going to move this over a little bit here. And I'm going to draw, uh, oh actually let me, tr let me try that in a different uh, color, oops, okay I'm having trouble changing colors. Okay, uh, having difficulty with the colors there, I got it now. So let's draw a slope like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that that's theta. And now we're not going to do physics now. We're just doing geometry. So 
If I pick a point here, let's say this point, and I draw a line straight down. Now, I know that this, it makes a right angle triangle. That means that this angle here, whatever it is, let's call it phi, that means that those two angles add up to 90 degrees. So theta plus phi add up to 90. Because they all have to add up to 180, right? And this is a perpendicular, this is 90 degrees. So we know that these two angles are what's called complements of each other. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Now what I want to do is draw another line perpendicular to the slope right here. Watch this. Oh boy, that's tough. Let me try that again to draw a straight line. There. Now I know that this line and this line are perpendicular. Okay? That means that if whatever this angle is, this angle plus this angle must equal 90 degrees because when you have two when you have perpendicular if this is perpendicular then so is this that means phi and this angle must be 90 but guess what phi and this initial angle down here is also equal to 90 so that means the complement of a complement is equal to the angle that means this must be theta. Let me give you a, no, a, a number example. Let's say this angle is 30. That means this must be 60, right? Because they have to add up to 90. That means if this is 60 and these two angles have to add up to 90, that means this one must be 30. And notice 30 equals 30. That means if this is theta, this must also now be theta. Now that I know that is true, that, I, that trig identity for the ankles is true, I know now that if I come over here, this angle here must be theta. Okay? Now that I know that, I can calculate the two components that make mg. That mean, and if I change colors here properly, that means this, since it's the adjacent side and mg is the hypotenuse, this must be mg cosine theta. And this must be mg sine theta. Now, I have the two components just like I had before. Well, specifically, I'm talking about the, the component that is perpendicular. Do you remember before, mg was down and fn, which was mg, was up? Well, guess what? Now, the force that's up, and I can do this in a different color here, goes straight up, and that is Fn, and that's going to be equal and opposite, just like before, but now it's going to be mg cosine theta. And the, the force of gravity down the slope is going to be mg sine theta. You see? So now, if I wanted to calculate friction, so now, remember, my equation for force of friction is mu Fn, yeah? So now this really makes sense, because before on a horizontal surface, Fn was mg, but now Fn is no longer mg, it's mg cosine theta, so this equation becomes mu mg cosine theta. Haha, -ha, now that's the force of friction. So, let's say for example, if I ask you this question, if I said that a mass on a slope where, let's say, uh, theta 
is equal to theta is uh, 49 degrees and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. What would be the acceleration of this object sliding down the slope? Pause the video now, go and see if you can figure it out. Okay, some of you might be wondering, hey, teacher, you forgot about the mass, right? How can we do this without this? Well, watch what happens when I draw the free body diagram. I have this mass on the slope, and I have a force this way of, right, gravity, mg sine theta, and in the opposite direction, I have friction. Why? Because it's sliding down the slope, so friction's always opposite to the direction of motion. But this is going to be mu mg cosine theta, right? From here. And now, I'm going to say down the slope is positive. So if I do sum of the forces equals F net, I have mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta equals ma from F net. And now look what happens to my masses. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And so now I can even factor the g out and I'll have sine theta minus mu cosine theta times g equaling a. And now I can plug my values in, sine 49 minus 0.3 cosine 49 times 9.8, and that gives me an acceleration of approximately 5.5 meters per second squared. And so that is my acceleration. So I hope this made sense, and um, we'll be doing more of these in the future.